hopefully we speak to 60 people here in the village hall and now we are somehow connected to a global audience i hope you can hear me and i just gonna crack on in the next half hour to speak about the first 24 hours of the fall after being born So after discussing the immediate postnatal period, I will speak about how to get foals to drink, have a few words about the first mare's milk, the colostrum, then speak about meconium and the first wee, and finally conclude with the veterinary post foaling check. So immediately after birth, that's really where we stopped the seminar last time. Um, we want to clear the fetal membranes away from the foal's head and then just have a look at the foal. And normally after 20 seconds, the foal will take the first breath and then the chest starts moving. If we want to stimulate the breathing, we can dry the foal off with a bit of straw or with a towel and that helps in itself to stimulate it. And then the foal normally... Initially on this photograph, you can see the foal is literally just being born and still has the hind legs in the mare. But after about five to 10 minutes, the foal will go into a sternal recumbency. And at that stage, it's very important for us to take a little bit the back step and actually let the mare and the foal bond together because that is a very, very important period for both of them. And sometimes we are so excited and are interfering and that's actually not very helpful for that process because an experienced mare will actually lick and try to fall off. And just with pushing gently, like you can see on the right photograph at the back end of the fall, it will almost guide the fall to the other and make the fall drink. And this first suckling usually happens within two hours. Um, it's very well known that colds tend to be a tiny bit slower than the fillies very often. But in general, um, if we leave them well on their own, um, that process really starts within the first two hours. Now, sometimes we do have foals that don't drink or don't want to drink. And I feel it's quite important that I to introduce maybe two slides just to give you some guidance and tips what you can do if you deal with a foal that doesn't want to drink within, the, within two hours. The most important thing is if you are on alone, it's very, very difficult. You almost have to be two people because it's very important you have someone holding the mare. Um, either with a bridle or a chiffney or just in a heck collar and a second person who kind of guides the foal to the other. It does help if you position the mare slightly towards the wall, then she can't swing her back end away. Sometimes some young nervous mares, they need a tiny bit of sedation. Very rarely we use a twitch as well, but I have to say we are using the twitch less and less in the management of mares and the most important I said that at the beginning is really to be kind and gentle with the mare because there's this famous equation action versus reaction so if you are very hard on the mare the mare will be stressed and it won't be a very pleasurable experience. Some mares um, still don't really want to accept the fall and that's something we have been using now for a few years, we actually give a high dose of prostaglandin to the mare and that has induced mothering instincts. Um, the dose we normally use is two to three mils intramuscularly and then the mare will really sweat up, but um, mares that haven't been accepting the fall very well or all of a sudden show quite rapidly mothering instincts. Um, some practical tips how to guide the foal um, to the other. You can strip a tiny bit of milk and then just tickle the foal's bum and that will automatically introduce a reflex where the foal starts to, starts to try to find the other and drink. 
Another possibility is that you get a tiny bit of the colostrum on your fingers and then guide the false muscle towards the false, uh, the, the mare's other. Very rarely, it can be very frustrating that actually the foal is getting so tired and so frustrated that it can't get to drink or doesn't want to get drink that it just gives up. And in that case, it's sometimes good just to strip a little bit of milk. You don't need that mare milk where I have a photograph there. You can just strip it with your hands and just give 300 mils of colostrum in a baby bottle to the foal and let the foal, the foal will have a full tummy, will lay down and sleep. And it is amazing that after 15 minutes of sleep, a lot of foals will literally just get up and then start drinking totally on their own. A few words to the first mare's milk. It's called the colostrum. It's the milk that the mare produces in two to three days before foaling. Colostrum is very important because it not only contains energy, it also has growth factors and immunomodulators and antibodies and immune globulins. These are very important as the foal's immune system is not completely functional when a foal is born. And it needs to absorb those antibodies from the mother. And the best time of absorption is really in the first eight hours. And this transfer of antibodies through the colostrum, we call passive transfer of immunity. The first poo of the foal is called meconium. And these are those hard nuggets that are passed by the foal. And normally, they are passed within the first six hours of birth. And after that time, the poo changes to a pasty, yellowy, brown um, uh, poo. And that normally occurs, you know, within 12 to 24 hours after birth. Very rarely, and we tend to see it more in cold foals because the pelvis is a little bit more narrow, they struggle to pass those meconium balls um, without any pain. And sometimes it can just be a little bit straining, like you can see on the left video, but sometimes it can really be quite violently rolling and um, colicking on the floor. And in the first 24 hours, that can be quite common and the best treatment is to give a so-called NMR. Um, there is different forms of NMR. This is on the photograph is the mildest form. It's just a phosphate NMR, but you can also use some soapy water or if it's really, really stuck when we come out to the farm, then we use a so-called retention NMR where we blow up uh, a little catheter in the rectum of the foal, and then actually we leave the fluid sitting in there for 10 minutes to break down the meconium balls and then let it come back out. But it is amazing that a foal that is quite painfully rolling on the floor, once we have given an enema and once the poo comes through, that a foal becomes very quickly more comfortable again. The First urination is normally around out eight hours after foaling, cold slightly earlier, about six hours after foaling, and 10 hours for fillies. Um, it's important to carefully observe the urination, whether there is any problem. So is there excessive straining or is there dripping of urine from the navel area? And this cold, you can see, is just weeing tiny little, um, little bits. And I project over it a foal that has meconium impaction. So when a foal has meconium impaction, the back is rolled upwards. And when it's, um, excuse me, and when a foal has um, urinary problems or just wheeze tiny little amounts, it's actually bent downwards. So that's the... Uh, quite an interesting difference, you know, to notice just clinically observing a foal, is it straining because there is meconium impaction or is it straining because it's struggling to wee? There's one condition that we occasionally see for foals that um, just painful weeing, there can be a ruptured bladder and then rather than weeing 
normally the urine that is produced actually goes into their abdomen. And then these folds need to be referred to the clinic and the rupture bladder needs to be surgically repaired. I, as a summary for really the first um, hours in a false life, um, I find this table quite helpful. So as I said, after five to 10 minutes, we expect the fold to be in sternal recumbency. After one hour, we think the fold should be standing. After two hours, drinking. And within three hours, the mare should have passed the fetal membranes. A suckling reflex is normally present within the first 20 minutes. The first urination after six hours in colds and 10 hours in fillies. And the meconium should be passed within four hours of birth. It's very interesting once the foals are drinking and the colostrum is, comes into the GI tract, that also tends to stimulate this first passage of the meconium. So what are we doing when we come out to the farm? Because we highly recommend to our breeders basically to get the foal checked 12 to 24 hours after being born. And the reason for that check is to detect early abnormalities before serious complications develop. When I come to the farm, um, I tend to observe the foal and the mare first from a distance. Foals, they get up four, five times an hour. They sleep for 10 minutes, they go up again. And just seeing from a distance whether a foal is relaxed, whether the mare is relaxed, whether a foal goes up, and drinks um, is extremely helpful to see whether things are going the right way or not. We then follow it up with a much closer physical examination on that first photograph of the eye. You can see that the lower eyelid is rolled in. We call that an entropion, um, which we sometimes see in folds and the most important thing is to roll that eyelid back out because if we leave it rolled in it can cause ulceration on the surface of the eye. Um, we also check the mucous membranes of a foal because depending um, how much oxygen the foal is getting or whether there's a liver problem the color of the mucous membranes can change and um, that also is a very important factor for us in the physical exam. Going on with the physical exam, we listen to the heart, we listen to the lungs. Um, this is a photograph of my colleague Paula here doing the physical, uh, doing the auscultation of the chest. And then we also um, palpate the abdomen. On the top right corner, you can see a fall where the navel area is slightly swollen. And that can either be theoretically at the early onset of an infection. It could be that the hope flow tract from the ureter is still open, a patent uracus, we call that. Or it could be what the most common is, actually a hernia of the navel area, which can be rectified at a slightly later stage. We also in colds check the inguinal area. There is a possibility that we can have a hernia in that part. And we palpate very, very carefully the ribs. Sometimes after folding, there can be rib fractures as well. One sign we always look at is the udder of the mare. You can see when a mare has a very big udder and milk is running, that might be an indication that there is a problem with the foal, that it's not drinking enough. A word to prematurity or maladjustment syndrome, or as we colloquially call it, dummy foals. Um, these are foals that are just not quite behaving the right way. And sometimes foals can actually behave quite normally the first few hours, and then all of a sudden they start deteriorating. They're not really interested in drinking. They sleep a lot. Sometimes they have quite a small body weight, floppy ears. This silky hair coat, like you can see on the chestnut foal, um, the foals appear weak. They have no interest in drinking. And if foals don't go up anymore, they can very, very quickly deteriorate. 
and become critically ill because they really depend on getting up very regularly and drinking uh, regularly to maintain um, their body condition. And it is very important if you notice that your foal is not drinking and is just not behaving right, that you call us out much sooner because these are really medical emergencies and those foals need to be referred to the hospital into intensive care. There is a milder type of dummy foals that is just not quite there. Um, an Irish breeder once said these are foals like um, the lights are on, but nobody is home. So those foals are just wandering around in the stable. They are just not quite sure where the mare's other is, but they are kind of strong enough. And a new study in Davis by Professor John Madigan has found out that there is actually a hormone called allopregnanolone. I, I had to write it down that I could remember the name myself. But that hormone basically keeps a foal calm while it's in the uterus. And through the birth process, through the compression of the chest, that hormone gets suppressed. And then that, in a way, wakes the foal up and stimulates normal postnatal behavior. And now in foals, where that is not happening, where the foals are just not quite bright enough to really drink, um, uh, Professor Madigan found out that if we stimulate that birth process and squeeze that chest with a rope for 20 minutes, we can suppress that hormone and the foal will get up and is much brighter and much more stimulated. And this is um, a photograph um, of, a, of a foal that I treated four years ago. Again, it was up, but it just wasn't drinking enough. And then we just put a lunge line with a few loops around the chest. And then when we pull that line, the foal actually just lays down and falls asleep. And this foal didn't have any treatment, had literally just the rope around the chest. And then you can see it's, it's just sleeping there. And we keep that rope tight for 20 minutes and then we release it. And it is fascinating that then literally those foals normally get up and go straight under the mare and start drinking. Um, and that's the foal three years later. He was a great stallion. Um, so we can see once um, those foals get over that initial problem, and that is actually the same for any dummy foal. You know, once they leave the ICU unit and, so, and, and pull through, um, they develop into absolutely normal horses. Um, at the call out, and I won't lose much time about it because Ed is going to speak about it, we assess the leg confirmation because that has an influence on turnout. And then we also give an injection for tetanus because um, falls are not protected against tetanus. And um, if there is an injury, um, theoretically a fall could get... Um, could, could get this, this deadly disease and therefore we just prevent it with a one-off injection of tetanus antitoxin. We also do a blood test during the visit and there's two purposes to do that blood test. First, we want to rule out an infection and B, we want to make sure that the foal has enough antibodies. Um, with the antibodies, basically the test result will come back either red, orange, or green. So in the red zone, we get IgG levels from zero to four, and we call that a failure of passive transfer. Basically, either the mare didn't produce enough colostrum or the foal didn't drink, but basically the IgG level is insufficient. And those foals are at a risk to develop a disease. Amber is four to eight, is partial failure of transfer. So that means the foals have gotten some antibodies and in these foals we look at the rest of the blood. So if there is no other infection and the foal is absolutely fine, then these foals might very well be okay. But if we see any other signs, then in these foals we feel we have to be careful because there is a risk that an infection could develop and then 
the last group is the green group where the IgG level is over eight. And in these foals, we know there is a complete transfer of passive immunity and we feel those foals have been drinking sufficiently colostrum and are sufficiently protected. What happens in those foals where the IgG levels are insufficient, then we come back out the next day and give a plasma transfusion. Um, we have to give a short sedation to the foal and put the cannula into the vein. And then we transfer um, a liter or sometimes two liter of plasma um, to the foal. And as a general rule, one liter of plasma normally increases the IgG by about two. So if you have a level of two and you give one liter of plasma, you will come into this amber zone around four um, as a general rule. The other thing um, is important is the examination of the mare. When we are out there, we check, is the mare okay? Is she depressed? Does she colic? And we check as well the reproductive tract, whether there has been any damage during foaling. And very often, mares that have been stitched up and caslic get stitched back together um, to prevent any infection till they are covered again. Last but not least, we have a quick look at the placenta. This is very important um, in case there is problems with the placenta. That can be an indication that a fold could be infected as well. And therefore, um, for me, it's always very important to know, A, the placenta is complete, as was discussed last time, but B, also, is there any chance that there could be an infection for the fold? And that is basically it. So I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Simon, for an excellent presentation. I'm sure we all learned a lot and are ready for uh, to, to know what to look for. We have a few questions from people. A question that came back quite often is, um, what do you think about collect collecting some colostrum from a mare um, just in case and freeze it? So actually put on um, a colostrum bank and in which cases would you take it from which mares and how much would you take from a mare? That's a very good question. Um, can you hear? So if you milk it from a mare that is already nursing a foal, a, a mare produces about colostrum. And basically the foal will need about one and a half liters, but if, if you have a foal that has drunk well for the first two hours, I feel it would be very safe to strip some colostrum of that mare and keep that frozen in reserve. Of course, if you have a mare that for whatever reason loses her foal, then that's ideal. You can strip all the colostrum off and freeze that. Um, and another thing that I haven't mentioned, but I think it was mentioned last week, is sometimes mares are running actually milk and because they only produce two liters of colostrum, um, if they run more than two liters, all the colostrum is gone. So if you had a mare that is running milk before foaling, that would also be very important to actually strip about half a liter or a liter of colostrum of that mare and then keep it either in the fridge, if you're gonna use it within two to three days, but if it's longer than three days, then it is better, as it was said, to put it in the freezer. Important when you thaw it again, you don't want to thaw it in water that is hotter than 37 degrees because you're going to cook all the antibodies. Because sometimes you are in a rush and you think, oh, I have the colostrum in the freezer. And it is very important that you thaw that very slowly not to destroy the antibodies in the colostrum. Thank you, Simon. Um, another question is um, with enemas, uh, a lot of people give it um, standard an enema to, fo to falls just when they're born, they give them uh, a fleet of phosphate enema. Do you think it can, you can do harm with that or do you think it's a good thing to do if you have one and just helping your fall uh, passing that, that, that uh, first meconium? In 
15 years of practice, I never had any side effects. And that is really what most of our breeders do. They just use those commercial phosphate venomous. It is in the literature described that it can cause colic in some folds. And I had one miniature fold, but that's really one in 15 years. And it was a very small foal, and I gave it the whole enema, and that was colicking after giving it. So my only advice would be, yes, no problem, but if it's a very small foal, maybe only give half. Um, and if you're really worried, you could use um, soapy water enemas. There is definitely no risk that you could do any harm with that. Yeah, I think it's just important that you use one and then if, if they still, if your fall is colicking after that, still straining um, to call your vet out and then to do, um, so they can give another um, enema to the fall or maybe an anesthetocysteine enema, depending on what is, is there. But if I, I do believe that indeed one, one phosphate enema won't uh, harm the fall, but repetitive phosphate enemas are, are not ideal. Maybe. Um, what is um, with bladder ruptures? What, do, they, do those uh, falls have a fair prognosis? Um, and what? Yes, the prognosis is good. It depends how quickly you diagnose it. So very often those falls actually by the time they end up in the search are about two days old and there is some electrolyte disturbances because basically the urine gets pulled in the abdomen and that then all of a sudden can make the falls a little bit depressed and they need to be stabilized first before we can take them to surgery. But if it's diagnosed quickly, the bladder ruptures, the prognosis is very good.